Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this quick little video. Uh, I had a user question come in today and I figured I might as well make a little live stream and video out of it. So the question is, how can I make the armor into individual pieces that I can use in other ways? We've got this armor pack, uh, object here, which is quite big. This is the unrigged uh, version. So when we um, load this up, we don't have any rigging, but we have all these objects and right now, if I press play, then they just sit there. I mean, I don't, I don't have any colliders or, or whatnot on them, but they are, you know, something that you can move around, but they are, of course, part of this shot parent. This isn't a super complicated thing, um, but the solution to this is really just to drag these into the inspector. So I'm gonna create a new folder here and we're gonna call this demo. Open the prefab out and just bring those over. And we discard those changes because we don't actually want to change the prefab. So now we've got all these different objects here. And if I bring them in, they are at the exact same position that they were before. So let's turn off that main one. And now they're all individual objects, which is cool, but we probably want them to be at zero, zero, zero. Even with that, there are some things that are still off. So the gauntlet here, it's at zero, uh, X and Y, but it's still off because its pivot is way over here. Of course, we want it to be there so this is this is where you can use a parent object so right now this the object itself is just one object it's just the gauntlet it's got its mesh render and all that so what we want to do is create an empty object and we're going to call this gauntlet uh, left and we'll duplicate that and for the right um, and we'll put these at the same position as the rest 0.5 right now and then i'm gonna make this a child and make this one a child and then bring this over to where I think it should be. We'll say uh, maybe 0.75. And then this one will do negative 0.75. That should be the equal and opposite. And if I turn off everything else here, we'll see them. Okay, so that looks about right. Um, give or take there, even the middle seems to be about in the middle of where they are. And so now I'm going to make these into prefabs themselves. This is actually a good practice um, for if, for really anything is to have the parent object be an empty object with just a transform on it and everything else underneath it be the child. That way, if I want to during game or something replace this gauntlet with another one, I don't have to actually replace the parent itself. I just have to replace the child. Maybe I turn one on or off or maybe I instantiate one or something else. But this way, it, it just keeps it a little bit cleaner and opens up a little bit more options. And what we've basically done here is instead of having uh, the transform way over here, we've now have the transform in the middle where we, uh, whoops, where we expect it to be. And now we can manage it that way. And so let's see what happens when we add colliders since, since we're here. So I'm gonna start with the helmet. Let's bring it up here. Add a component collider. Uh, we'll do a mesh collider. I know mesh colliders are not always the most performant, but in this case, let's just see what happens. Um, and rigid body, and so that way it can fall with gravity. On the mesh co collider, I'm gonna uh, click convex, and now we can see uh, the collider right here. And when we press play, it falls down with the rigid body and lands on the ground. And so that's kind of what I'm guessing uh, the user who asked me the question is, is looking to do. Use these in a real world setting, let them fall down, and tilt and fall as as they may. So let's come out of play mode. And we can do the same thing with all of these. I wonder if we add a, um, well, let's add a rigid body and then add a mesh collider to all of these. Do they get their own? They do, look at that. Okay, so that makes it easy. For all of these, we're gonna add a rigid body and a mesh collider. Click, click that, there we go, we can see them now, press play. And they exploded because they're all together. Well, that wasn't exactly what we were looking for. So let's just uh, separate them out a little bit. All right, so we've separated these out. Let's just press play and see what happens. All right, and they all fall down. And it looks like some of them may have fallen below. Can't tell. But they've all fallen down. And this is often what people want to use um, in the game so you can get a pile of armor that you can then collect and then wear so that's a much more rewarding experience to see a pile of armor rather than 
you know, a preformed full armor set just sitting on the floor as if somebody laid it out nicely. Um, further, you could even add cloth physics to the pants or something to make them more uh, physically uh, accurate. While I was separating, you may have noticed that some of these pieces are really kind of the same thing. So I'm going to turn them all off here and look at the curious, these three. If we load that up, whoops, uh, you see that they're all kind of the same part. Obviously, you're probably not going to have uh, one without the other. So now I, I put all their uh, positions in a slightly different, so now I just have to reset it. Now we really have three pieces. And when I press play here with just the three of them, they're going to break apart. And I don't want them to break apart. I want them to stay together because this is uh, one piece that maybe the player can pick up and, and then put on. So we're going to create a new parent again. Um, create empty and we'll call this uh, curious. And we'll keep this at, well, it's actually at a good position already, it looks like. Um, maybe, maybe we'll move it forward just a little bit. Because um, what we're going to do is take these three and just put them here as a child of that. I'm going to make this a little bit more optimized by turning off the mesh collider here. Actually, we're just going to oh, not copy the component. We're going to remove the rigid body, remove the collider. We don't need those on the straps. For both of these, we're going to do the exact same thing. Uh, remove those because now we don't want them to separate, but we do want them to fall. So on the parent, we're going to add a rigid body. So let's start by creating a 3D object and we're going to create a cube. And we're going to scale this down so that it's kind of filling up the space. Uh, maybe we'll increase this height. Uh, but there we go. Just a general gist of it. And then we're going to remove or turn off the mesh render. If you want, think you're going to change it later, just keep that on. Otherwise, you can just remove these entirely. And then it's just an empty object with a collider. Uh, and I'm going to call this cube uh, collider. And then we're going to create another new object, a sphere. And again, we're going to bring this down. And I want this object to roll. And so I'm going to use two primitives, uh, primitive colliders to get that effect um, whoops, uh, as best as I can. And in game, it will look a little bit more natural without having to use a mesh collider, which is much more expensive and harder to do since there are really three different meshes here. So again, turn this off, and I'm going to make one more of these. Um, and this time I'm going to bring it to the front, move it down a little bit, so that it rolls on its front as well. And turn that off, and we'll just quickly rename these Sphere Collider, and we'll rename this one as well. When it falls, I'm going to expect that this is going to land straight flat, and since we only have a box collider, yeah, it's probably just going to lay flat. So that's not super realistic. Um, I would expect this, especially since it's kind of curved right here, to fall down uh, in some way, shape, or form. So I'm going to create one more sphere collider. Uh, since I, I'm going to copy that, and since I didn't remove this component, I'm just going to turn it back on so I can see it. Bring this down. I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger. Um, well, maybe not too much bigger. Right there. And I'm going to bring this back just a little bit. What I'm really looking to achieve is this right here, that little bump. Turn off the mesh renderer, press play, and let's see what happens. And it still didn't fall over. Oh well. Um, it's closer, but yeah, at least it's it's leaning on itself. But of course, that's because if we look at our colliders, you can see uh, that's really kind of pushing on these two colliders. Um, so what we could do, just as uh, to make this a little bit more realistic. Since we have a new sphere collider down there, we can actually bring the uh, box collider up and we'll bring it to here and press play and let's see what happens. There we go. So now it's falling down. There is some clipping here. You can adjust the, the colliders if you want to see how you can, um, how you can address that. So now it's just making it bigger. Now, of course, if you if you make it bigger and during runtime, you're going to have to copy this transform, press stop, and then paste the values. And now when we run play, it will fall over and it cuts in a little bit, but it lands in a more uh, optimal position. So now this object is a curious that can land. And of course, to create the prefab of it, just drag that into your prefab folder. And now you can use it in any way you want.
So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show um, some tips and tricks around uh, how to create, you know, new prefabs and, and set things up so that they can be used in different ways. Um, oftentimes, if you don't buy my stuff, in, even with my other wardrobe, they're going to be rigged. Uh, a lot of the props will be rigged or the, the um, positions, the anchor points will be off. And if that's the case, just create a new parent and, uh, and then set the position within that parent of the child object that you're trying to manipulate and uh, keep the parent as a separate object, which is a, a healthy tip overall. All right. Have a great day.